Friends, this is the day that our God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And no matter who you are or where you are, you are welcome here. Friends, Merry Christmas yet again and Happy New Year. We have a new year and a new opportunity to do good things in God's name. And I, for one, am so grateful to be starting out this new year with you. Friends, this is Epiphany, the day that we celebrate and tell the age-old story of the Magi coming to visit Jesus and Mary and Joseph shortly after his birth. We know that they were led by a star, and that star was a symbol of hope. So as we move into this new year, may we do so with the abundant hope that God provides us through God's love and God's caring, and for all of the things that we have coming up in this new year full of possibilities. Friends, this is the week that we will begin to really resume regular activities. Please join us on Thursday for meditation and for prayer group at 2 and 7, respectively. Today is a family worship, and so there will not be Zooming in church school, but we invite you to participate in whatever way you are comfortable. There will be a bulked up children's bulletin available for you on this email, and the service will be family friendly, so please participate with us. As we move into this new year, we have so many exciting things to look forward to. Friends, you are loved, you are wonderful, and we are so grateful to move together in hope. And as we are all siblings in Christ, let us now join together to worship our God.
Good morning and happy new year. I hope everybody's 2021 is off to an amazing start. I hope you've had moments to rest and moments to spend time with people you love and moments to just find meaning and experiences and create new memories. I wish that all for you. I also want to wish you a Merry Christmas. We're still in the season of Christmas. We have our trees and our lights, and I want to encourage you to keep wishing people a Merry Christmas and spreading the joy of this season. You know, over the holidays, the Christmas holidays, a lot of us were really busy. But in the midst of this busyness and chaos, there was an amazing historic astrological event. Two planets, Jupiter and Saturn, got closer together than they've been to each other in the last 800 years. You can find pictures of it online. Here's the one I found. If you could see right here, the planets got so close to each other that they made such a bright light that people are calling it the Christmas star. You know, some people think that it was this same conjunction, this same meeting of Jupiter and Saturn that helped to direct the wise people to find baby Jesus. We know all about that from our Christmas pageant. The star this year played by Sophia is a really important role in our pageant. The star not only directs the wise people to Jesus, but the star leads our great procession. In some way, the star directs us all. Stars have this amazing gift to provide direction, to show us which way to go. And that's not all. Stars have this amazing gift. Stars actually generate their own light. It's an amazing thing. And then that light travels miles and miles and miles and miles and miles away. And the air that travels between us and the star is what makes it look like it's shining and glimmering. But that light travels so far. It's such an amazing gift that stars give us, that gift of light. You know, I think in 2021, one thing that we could do is we could try to imitate stars, try to be like stars. I don't know if we have the same chemical makeup to be able to create our own light in the same way but maybe we could create light in a different way. Maybe we can create our own light by being kind and being caring and being helpful. Maybe we can generate our own light by doing acts of love. Maybe for people that we know and maybe even for some people that we don't know. Maybe we can be like stars through generating our own love this year. I think that would make for a pretty good year. All right, let's pray. Holy God, we give thanks for a new year. And in this year, what better way to begin than by giving thanks for the universe, for all the stars and the moon and the sun and the planets. God, help us to be like stars and generate and create our own love this year. Be with us this day and in all of the days to come. Amen. Now, friends, let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is Psalm 72, verses 1 through 7 and 10 through 14. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people, give deliverance to the needy and crush the oppressor. May he live while the sun endures and as long as the moon throughout all generations. May he be like the rain that falls on the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. In his days, may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. May the kings of Tarshish and of the isles render him tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring him gifts. May all kings fall down before him. All nations give him service. For he delivers the needy when they call, the poor and those who have no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy, and he saves the lives of the needy. From oppression and violence, he redeems their life, and precious is their blood in his sight. The second reading is from Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chiefs, priests, and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gold, frankincense, and mirth. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road.
Friends, please join with me in prayer. Loving God, on this first Sunday of the new year, bless our hearts, bless our minds, and bless our hearing to hear the word you would have us here today. And bless all of the possibility that lies before us and help us to move forward into an unfolding hope into a new year. In your son's precious name we pray, amen. On December 21st, on the solstice, we witnessed a great convergence. And I know that many of us were looking for it, and a few of us were even lucky enough to see when Jupiter and Saturn's orbits came so close together that they appeared in our early evening sky as one large celestial phenomenon. It last occurred hundreds of years ago, and it isn't predicted to occur again until 2080. I found it to be really really awe-inspiring. And certainly the Great Convergence or a Great Convergence is an explanation for the Christmas Bethlehem star that we see in today's scripture reading. So just what do we make of the story of the wise people following a magical star from the east, coming all the way to Bethlehem to worship a newborn king? The whole story seems a bit far-fetched and fairy taleish. Well, I used to think so at least. Many will deny the possibility of a supernatural explanation to begin with because we have such a logical scientific one. But I am of the mind that if God can bring the universe into being by one decree or raise the dead at will, then I see no reason why God could not have also sent a bright star at that first Christmas. I like to think that that star that led the Magi to Bethlehem was a combination of both natural and astral activity in concert with God's supernatural sending of God's own son when the fullness of time has come, as it says in the scripture. Now we need to remember that these were not three kings, as the song says. They were magi from the east, which means they were most likely superstitious astrologers that, became, that came perhaps from the court of Babylon or even from the Persian court. The ancients assigned great significance to the art of reading and interpreting the movements of the skies. They kept careful records of the notable celestial activity. And with computer technology today, we can calculate approximately where each of these stars and planets were in the sky all the way back 2000 years ago and beyond. The scientific record indicates that some pretty interesting astral activity was occurring around the time of Jesus' birth. In the year 7 BCE, there was a unique convergence of the planets Jupiter and Saturn under the sign of Pisces in the zodiac. And the last of these convergence, convergences included Mars as well. The significance of these convergences, according to the astrological meanings assigned to these different planets and zodiac signs, makes for a pretty strong case for why some Eastern astrologers of possibly Babylon or Persia might be interested in going to see if the stars really said what they thought they had said, namely that a new and mighty Prince of Peace had been born, someone who was to become and to be called the King of the Jews. The star which the wise people follow becomes a bridge between the pagan astrological hopes that invite all Gentiles into God's story and the Jewish biblical promise of a Messiah. We know that that Jewish biblical promise of the Messiah that will come from the star of Jacob is spoken to us in the Old Testament in the book of Numbers, chapter 24, verse 17. Now these two disparate worlds are aligning in this one birth to achieve the same goal. And that goal is a hope for our future. Matthew's gospel reminds us that even from Jesus's birth, we see the walls between races and cultures breaking down. And perhaps that's why this is such a vital message for this first Sunday in the new year. Mark Woodward sent me an awesome article over break about the forgotten radicalism of Jesus. You can find it in the New York Times archive. In the article, author Peter Werner writes, First century Christians weren't prepared for what a truly radical and radically inclusive figure Jesus was, and neither are today's Christians. We want to tame and domesticate who he was, 
But Jesus' life and ministry didn't really allow for it. He shattered barrier after barrier. The author goes on to say that Jesus must have understood that we human beings battle with exclusion, self-righteousness, and arrogance. And we have a quick trigger finger when it comes to judging others. Jesus knew how easily we could fall into the trap of turning others into the other. The other that is different because of race or ethnicity, class, gender, or nation. And how quickly we can turn those others into enemies. We place loyalty to the tribe over compassion and human connection. And we view differences as threatening. The result is that we've become isolated and rigid in our thinking, harsh and unforgiving. But the author goes on to continually say that Jesus clearly believed that outcasts had a lot to teach the privileged and the powerful, including the virtues of humility and the vice of supreme certitude. Rather than seeing God as strictly a moral taskmaker, Jesus understood that the weak and the dispossessed often experienced God in a different way. They experienced God as a dispenser of grace, a source of comfort, a redeemer. And they see the world and God through the different prism than do the powerful and the proud. The lowly in the world offer a corrective to the spiritual astigmatisms that develop among the rest of us. I really commend the rest of this article to you. It's really fantastic. The gentle magi are seen to have what is a common occurrence in Matthew's gospel. The ability to bo be both obedient to God by literally and figuratively following the light, while King Herod, the chief priests, and the scribes serves as foils to show the unbelief of some of the people to whom Jesus was sent, and to show how easy it is to turn the other into the enemy. Matthew consistently states and relates everything back to Jesus's future story and puts it in the framework of the ongoing story of God. The worst depravity in Matthew's gospel is the hypocrisy of the Judean leadership, which King Herod portrays well in his sneaky and murderous intentions while engaging the trusting Magi. It also forebodes to what will later happen to Jesus because the past in Matthew always points to Jesus's future. This interpretation is appropriate both to Matthew's era and to the community to which he writes. There are two claims of kingship here. This one in the world to which Herod holds claim and is keen to retain and the divine kingship that Jesus's birth represents. The wonder with which the Magi see and interpret translates as faithful action as they seek to both pay homage to Jesus and scramble Herod's plots for murder. No matter where the Magi were really from, we know that this journey was a long and arduous one. It echoes Abraham's obedience to God in traveling from Ur in modern day Southern Iraq all the way to Egypt and then back to Hebron in the Promised Land. But what would compel not just one person, but several people to follow a portent in the sky on such a dangerous journey so far from home? I often have been wondering this as we ourselves have been living through this global pandemic for almost an entire year. Our journey has been long and we don't know when the end will be in sight. All of our ambiguous losses create extreme discomfort and we are tired of wandering through the wilderness with all of the anchors that used to hold us in place being uprooted and setting us adrift. Adapting daily to new information and ways of doing things is tiring. And personal losses, whether through death or job loss or other changes, they deplete our emotional reserves. We wonder why this is happening. And we know that some have even lost their faith in God. But this is where our story and the story of the wise people converge. We are not lost. We are traveling towards something that is greater than ourselves. And Emmanuel, God with us, is as close as our breath. As Christians in this broken and hurting world, we can now act to reach out to our neighbors and to offer hospitality of the heart. We have what the Magi in Matthew's community had 
hope for a better future. Like them, let us follow in this new year the star that will bring us close to Jesus. And then when we know Jesus, we can change course going home another way. We know that life will never be the same as it was before the pandemic. And there's a quote that is often attributed to Carl Jung, but was actually written by Erasmus. And it just says simply, bidden or unbidden, God is present. The Magi did not know God in the way that we know God. The Magi did not know God in the way that the Judean people did. Yet God's sign compelled them to become a part of God's hopeful story. In the Anglican Episcopalian Book of Common Prayer, Christian hope is defined as living with confidence in newness and fullness of life, awaiting Christ's coming in glory to the completion of God's purpose in the world. I like that. And I, for one, want to go into 2021 with confidence in newness and fullness of life. And even though, like all of you, I have no idea what to expect in 2021, I am seeing hope unfolding nonetheless. The story of the Magi is a good reminder that God is doing a new thing. And God is doing a new thing then and now. We are all invited to be a part of the unfolding hope. So will we follow God and trust that God is doing a new thing in 2021? Well, I believe that together we can do anything. Happy New Year. Let's make it a good one. Amen. Friends, Merry Christmas. I hope you are finding ways to experience the joy and the wonder and the praise of this Christmas season. One way to experience it is to consider supporting the life of this congregation. Of course, we can't pass around plates like we used to, but there are many, many ways to give. You can give online, you can give by check, no matter what you give or how you give it, please know that your gifts will be received with an abundance of thanksgiving and joy. Merry Christmas.
Friends, we come now together for communion, and we remind one another that Jesus welcomes everyone at this table, that no one is turned away. If you seek God's presence, then come and eat. If you are hungry for the spiritual food, come and eat. If you have questions and doubts, come and eat. If you feel unworthy, come and eat. This table is for all of us, that we might experience God's abundant and unconditional love. Since his birth, with the visits with the wise ones, the strangers from the East, Jesus was not content to limit his welcome and message to his own people. Jesus was one who reached across all human borders and boundaries, seeing in everyone a common heritage as a beloved child of God. Whether it was Magi from the East, the woman from Samaria, or a leper from a nearby leper colony, Jesus welcomed them all. So remembering Jesus and his open-hearted welcome, let us join together in prayer. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the mighty sweep of your love that embraces all people and all nations. We thank you that you sent Jesus, our teacher, to us, who showed us the way to new life, a new life that gathers all of us in our diversity together in the one body of Christ. Bless this meal that we will share together today. As this broken bread with one scattered grain on a hillside and then when gathered became one loaf, so may we be brought together to make something wonderful. As this cup of the new covenant was poured out so that all might share in the signs of new life, so may our lives be poured out in compassion for our brothers and sisters and siblings everywhere. For this is the way of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Friends, we remember that it was on the night of Jesus' betrayal and desertion that he gathered his friends together for a meal in the upper room. And after supper, he took a piece of bread and he broke it, giving it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat this, all of you. This is my body. As often as you eat of this, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup after supper and he poured it out and passed it amongst his disciples, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, a cup of my blood shed for you and shed for all. As often as you drink from this cup, you do proclaim my resurrection until I come again. Friends, the table is prepared. We know that you are communing at home, so if you'd like to pause for a moment to get some elements together, I'd like to remind you that anything counts as communion. It doesn't need to be bread and this cup. It can be coffee and a bagel. It can be a cinnamon bun and some tea. Everything counts but please gather your elements so that we may join together in communion. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all things are now ready. Please join with me in the prayer of thanksgiving. Generous God, we thank you that you have blessed our world through such diversity. Through the broken bread, we ourselves are broken open so that we might be open to God's spirit made manifest among us. Through the poured out cup, we are inspired to pour out ourselves into generosity and into the world. So God, nourished by this holy meal, send us forth into the world that we might spread the good news of your love and care to all. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and life-giving God, we come to you this morning, your people, seeking your presence among us and around us. We follow moons and stars and suns and hopes and dreams to find you. We look for doves from heaven and manna on the ground to discover you. We play in the snow to hear you. We meditatively walk to sense you. 
We rest on benches to encounter you. Holy God, as we step into a new year, we pray that dawn breaks forth from darkness, that we will have the strength to dance into what lies ahead. We give thanks for the path behind us as we rejoice in its blessings, yet we also grieve its sufferings. And so we lift our eyes to what calls us forth, to love, to tenderness, to yearning. God, we lift up prayers for the members of this community who stand in need. We grieve the passing of Beverly Cunningham, a longtime beloved member of this Scarsdale Congregational Church. We lift up prayers for Cynthia De Bruin as she recovers from pneumonia. We pray your healing hand on her. We pray for all those who are suffering or recovering from illness. We pray for all those impacted by the explosion in Nashville. We pray for Washington to prioritize COVID relief, to care for people, and for the vaccine to be distributed equitably and swiftly. We pray all these prayers and more, prayers that are spoken and those that rest silently on our hearts. Holy God, this day we sing as one, we sigh as one, we rest in silence as one beating heart, believing that all is being made new. The invitation is to come and see. So we do, we try, and we tell others to come and see because we want to share all that is. This big, confusing, amazing world in which we follow you in the name of all that is holy. Amen.